So, yet again, Rockstar has provoked a backlash from thousands of people by re-releasing the much maligned and still broken mess known as Grand Theft Auto Definitive Edition. Have they fixed anything? No. Is this what anybody wanted? No. And is it worth 30 euros? No. Not at all. Keep in mind, 30 euros is what they're charging for it right now during the January sale, meaning that the price is going to be doubled by the time February 2nd rolls around. It really is a huge slap in the face to casually release and promote something that you you for a fact know the community despises, as evident by the low amount of people actually playing these games on Steam. As of the making of this video, there's a whooping 7 people playing Vice City. It's even more insulting when you take into account that Definitive Edition performs just as bad on Steam as on the Rockstar Games launcher. Steam Deck is no different, by the way. So there really is no excuse. Especially when you look back at the fact that Rockstar Games apologized to the community for how buggy and unfinished Definitive edition is. They released a disastrous and poorly optimized mess, apologized, waited, and now it's being released again. You know, it kind of undermines the apology when you keep doing the very thing you apologized for. Nothing's changed. It's the same spoiled burger being served again. Only this time, the waitress serving you is hoping that you'll pay in advance, hastily eat the schlop, leave, and not bother asking for a refund when you come back to the diner after surviving whatever diarrhea nightmare that lies ahead. Consider your Angus peppered. It is frankly a little bit offensive how much of a cash grab these beloved classics have become. It's a bit like going to a Tool concert, only for Maynard James Keenan to waddle up on stage, fart into a microphone, place it next to an old boombox, hit play, and have the audience subjected to a barely audible playlist of classic songs. Yeah, the songs are good, but the quality at which they're being delivered is awful and lazy. Awfully lazy? Lazily awful? No los dos. I've seen some Steam reviews giving tips on how to make the games perform better, which, I don't know, maybe it's just me, but I don't feel like it should ever be the reviewer who has to make the game playable. I feel like that responsibility falls entirely on the developer of the game. If I pay you for a product, then it's on you, the seller, to ensure at least decent quality, no? Another annoyance the Steam versions have fallen victim to is requiring the player to use the Rockstar Games launcher, which... Why? Like, actually, why? Is it not enough that I have the games paid for and installed on Steam? I know there are achievements on the Rockstar Games launcher, but apparently these achievements are also integrated on Steam, so like, there's no reason for me to use both. If you're gonna require me to use the Rockstar Games launcher, then why bother selling the games on Steam in the first place? Oh yeah, money, right. It doesn't benefit the community, it doesn't benefit the player, it doesn't benefit anybody but the shareholders. A lot of the positive reviews on Steam either consist of reviewers rambling about nostalgia, giving instructions on how to improve game performance, or referencing GTA memes. You know, that's... That's funny. Haha, uh, he's fat and he eats a lot of food and eh. Okay, look, if you want to praise San Andreas, Vice City, or GTA 3 for being good games, then yeah, you can do that. You can do that in ways that don't mislead people into thinking it's worth paying for Definitive Edition on Steam. And as for giving people advice on how to make the games playable, look, it's cool. I think it's very helpful and it's a nice thing you're doing, but the fact that you have to explain how to make the games playable in the first place, should that not be enough to give the game a negative review? You're acknowledging that the game is broken, so why categorize the review as being positive? It feels like most reviews are either non sequiturs or have nothing at all to do with the quality of Definitive Edition. Like yeah, Ray Liotta died, it's unfortunate, but honestly, what does this have to do with giving the game a positive review? Ray Liotta's dead, so now all of a sudden, Definitive Edition is good? This is horrible, it's just a disaster. It's been over a year since Rockstar patched anything, and it's not like they haven't had ample time to prepare a patch before dropping Definitive Edition on Steam. They've had plenty of time to do that. Not only would it make the games actually sell better on Steam, but they could have regained at least some trust from the community. Instead of just ignoring the backlash, show the people that you still care. If nothing else, do something about the many major technical issues people have been reporting for the past year. It's not too late, and I guarantee you it would not go unrecognized by the fans. I feel like the best way to summarize this is disappointment. I'm just really disappointed. As for anyone looking for an old school Rockstar game to play on Steam, I suggest getting Bully Scholarship Edition. It's only three and a half euros, and there is a community-made patch that actually makes it compatible with Windows 10. And 
hey, if you already have the game on Steam and you're interested in learning more about it, then I recommend checking out my video series on cut content in Bully. Anyway, that's it for this video. You folks, as always, stay classy. Peace.